Wonderful. In this video, we'll be solving lead code problem number 567 permutation in a string. So in this problem, we are given two string and in simple words, all these characters have to be present in this string S2 in continuous fashion. Say for example, this ABC is this present here. Yes, the order can be anything. It can be ACB, it can be BAC or any order, but the constraint is all these have to be continuously present in this string. Now, is ABC continuously present? Yes, these three characters are continuously present. So in this case, you'll be returning it true. Let's take another example. Now, a very similar example. If you look here, are these three characters present in this string? Yes, but they are they present continuously? No. If you look here, A is present, but in between since I is coming, they are not continuously present. So in this case, we will be returning a false. And this is not the only thing. It can come further, right? A, B, C, and then D. So in this case, you will be returning a true. It can be anywhere. We don't know. But the thing is, all these three characters have to be present continuously. Now, what is the brute force approach? I think this is the easiest approach, but this will guide you towards the optimized approach if you solve this very carefully. Now, let us find out. These three characters we know for sure will remain the same. So we will have the count A, B and C. Now, we will choose the first three characters and say E, is E present here? No, E is not present. I is also not present. B is also not present. So let's pick up the next three characters that is I, B, A. Now is I present in this? No. Then we go to B, A, C. Now once we check the frequency of each of them, they are present here. Right? Now what is the unnecessary thing that we are doing here? Let me tell you E, I, B is the first thing that we chose. Then we chose I, B, A. Then we chose B, A, C. But if you look here, every step only one character is getting added and one character is getting deleted. In this next step, E got deleted and A got added. In the next step, I got deleted and C got added. So every step what is happening, one character is getting added and one character is getting subtracted. And on the other side, this A, B, C is always constant. So is this leading us somewhere? Exactly. So this approach is leading us to sliding window. So every time we need not change all the characters, but we can subtract one character and we can add one character. And how do we store this? There are two ways of storing this. One is we can use a count map. That is since it is given, there will be only lowercase letters. This will constitute A, B, C and so on. That is index 0 will be A, index 1 will be B and so on. So what do we do? I will show you this. So how this will be stored is simply this will be 0, 1, 2 and so on until 26, until 25. So this A, the count will become 1, the count will be 1 and the count will be 1. Now, when you are comparing this, the same thing, you will be doing it for a different array. So E, whenever, wherever 4 is there, the count will become 1. Similarly, for I, wherever the count is, say, 8 or 9, I'm not sure. Uh, but the count will also become 1. Then, again, for B as well, then when you go towards this A, all you have to do is, wherever E is there, so subtract this by minus 1. So this will become 0. And wherever A is there, you will just be adding 1. And this will always be same. So once, after every step, don't forget, you have to compare these two. How do you compare? You have to go through the entire array of just size 26. So once you go this, all of them have to match with all of this. So once that happens, you can say, yes, let me return true. All of them are continuously present. So the pseudo code is very simple. We will initiate two different count maps. Then this is the sliding window approach. What we do, we get the first one, right? Say in our example, K was equal to three. So the first three characters of the first string will be putting into this. Then the next three characters will be putting into this. So once that is done, we will check if it matches. 
Now this is a function that you have to write by yourself. It's a very simple function that I explained. So if both of them matches, we will return true. However, in the next case, what we will be doing, we will be touching only the count two. We will not be doing anything for count one. So in simple, we are adding a character and subtracting a character. And if both of the arrays matches, that is the count array matches, we will be returning true. I hope you have understood the problem. Thank you for watching the video. Please do like, share and subscribe.